What is up everybody, Solomon here. Super excited to be with Genfinity at Consensus. And here we are again. We are at the Hedera booth. Uh, it looks amazing this year. I've got Brandon with me. Uh, this individual wears multiple hats within the Hedera community. Obviously a podcast host within the foundation, the HBAR Bull, co-founder of Twigital. Brandon, there has been a ton of innovation coming out of Hedera. I can think of just how much has happened since we were here, probably sitting across from each other last year. Just last year, right? What are some of the most interesting use cases that you have kind of seen over the past year? Well, that's that's what the the shift we're seeing. Like when we first, you know, started to, to pay attention to Hedera and what they're doing, it was all about the tech. You know, we, we were seeing the capabilities that were potentially going to come from this and thinking about the use cases that could be facilitated. Now we're shifting to exactly what you're talking about. These use cases actually coming to fruition. One of the biggest events here is going to be karate combat, right? Uh, it's showing how consumer engagement can, can really be taken to the next level with Web3. And you know, when I got involved in that, I saw it for myself. They wanted to create super fans and almost overnight using this up-only gaming mechanism, putting, uh, having skin in the game made me a super fan. So you know, anecdotal evidence, it works. Um, and then all of the other things that are coming along, whether it's D-PIN or our refi ecosystem, so regenerative finance and carbon credits, all of this exciting. Um, I was talking to Eric the other day. I asked him this same question. You know, what, what are you most excited about? And he actually brought up Hyundai, right? So the supply chain use case, tracking the carbon usage for their, the assembly of their cars through that supply chain. And it kind of surprised me because I would have thought the first one that he would have brought up would be at Myo because it's already out there processing 1,800 transactions per second, 2,200 transactions per second. But he focused on this one. And I like that idea because it's the potential for the future. He thinks there's something coming there because we're not seeing a lot of uh, transactions out of that use case yet. So that's the potential for the future. The one that has my has completely piqued my interest recently is uh, CLSQ, YSAT. Uh, it's a pure deep pin play. They already have 19 Pico satellites in orbit. Actually, I think it's 17. I've been saying wow. 19. It's gotten stuck into my head. But they were launched with... Um, uh, SpaceX and you know he went out there the the gentleman that I interviewed Carlos he's the CEO of CLSQ of YSAT uh, and he was invited by Elon Musk and 80 other CEOs to, to go and meet because he's one of their customers so they've designed these satellites specific for specifically for Internet of Things and not just Internet of Things but transactional Internet of Things so they've coined a new term that we knew was coming and they already have the, what CLSQ does is they create the chips that go in the machines, the objects, and they're already out there. They have me them in medical devices, they wanna target um, smart cities, smart homes, things like that. And then they have the communication already set up with the satellites. I mean, this is a lot of infrastructure that's already been in, put in place. And then the transactional portion comes into play uh, with their token. Their token is going to be built on Hedera. It's going to be called the SEAL token. And it's going to be coming out this fall. Right around the same time, they're sending their uh, second generation of um, satellites into orbit, again with SpaceX. So, and one of the other thing that kind of blew my mind when I was interviewing Carlos was, he's like, of course we want to target the billions of people out there in the Web3 space, but I want to target the trillions of objects. Oh my gosh, yeah, So, 100%. and looked at Hedera and said, the scaling capability is there, all right? And we're already starting to prove that. So that one has completely blown my mind. Yeah, and I know that you've been one of the earliest and, and kind of biggest from, from your personal standpoint, advocates uh, of the karate combat aspects. Mm -hmm. And you told me, I mean, I saw it. I saw the clip yesterday. It looks like we might have Joe Rogan. Uh, and depending on when this interview comes out, it will probably have already happened. But how awesome is it to see kind of the validation of somebody like, I mean, there's already been big names attached. But when you think about Joe Rogan, he is obviously the kind of one of the the biggest podcasters in the entire world. Only competing with Lex Friedman. Guess who else might be coming? Elon. Lex Friedman. Oh. <laughs> there's, there's a sli slight chance of that if anybody heard that. <laughs> but, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah, so w w with all these Web3 applications, you have to start with a core good product. Yeah. Right? And Karate Combat's a perfect example of that. I've been into MMA f since the 90s. I was a wrestler back in the day. And... When I first watched Karate Combat, I was like, this is just an exciting new sport, yeah. a new way of doing MMA 
focused on excitement, on entertainment, and, and then they created the pit. The cage has been used mainly for MMA, and it was a gimmick going back into the 1990s. They made the Karate Combat Pit specifically designed for sport. Yeah. And not only is it good for something like Karate Combat, but it's also good for grappling. We see the top grapplers in the world, Jiu-Jitsu, coming and wanting to compete, and they actually have a submission series now because the pit actually solved all kinds of problems for that sport that they didn't even know they were solving it for. So yeah. they started with that core product, and they're just using Web3 to enhance it. Yep. I'm curious from your standpoint because it feels like you know, you and I have been in the Hedera ecosystem for quite some time. It feels like there has been a little bit of a shift over the past year. I know I had uh, the opportunity to interview Ty, who's the you know senior product manager, tokenization and consensus at Swirls yesterday. He was mentioning an ETH Denver, ETH Denver, and he was basically you know providing the example where like last year people would come up and be like, "What is you know Hedera? What is?" And then he's like, now people are coming up and saying, tell me a little bit more about it. Yeah, or, or like a conversation I just had, tell me about identity, you know, or tell me about how I could facilitate my fintech use case or yeah. my, um, you know, micropayments use case. They already know about Hedera. They know about this and its capabilities. They want to know how they can use it or something they've already built that they want to incorporate into Hedera or use the, the powers of Hedera to enhance their products. Yep, and the infrastructure is here, obviously. I mean, we talk about um, real-world use cases uh, coming on and leveraging it for scaling purposes, which is really kind of awesome. Um, I'm curious, from your standpoint, what you're most excited about in the near future within Hedera as you kind of walk us out here. It's, it's always the unknown because CLSQ, that completely took us by you know, blindsided us. We, we didn't know it was coming. And then all of a sudden we had this massive use case we didn't know about. Um, you know, we had the Visa news with uh, SKUX, yeah. right? With Bobby coming out with that. He already had a deal with Mondelez, you know, and they do uh, Oreos and Chips Ahoy and Trident and all kinds of other brands uh, for their promotions. Now they're working with Visa. So you're automatically thinking about payments, potential for payments. Um, you know, it's, we just don't know what's out there. And that's what I'm always most excited about. Uh, what uh, Manon Harmon is the brother of Mans Harmon, the founder of Hedera, and he, he calls it the, the fifth ace up our sleeve, <laughs> that there's always something we don't know about out there that, that's coming up, and that's what, always what I'm most excited about. I think what was interesting, and you mentioned um, Bobby from SKUX, and we had the opportunity to interview him regarding the Mondelez governing you know, council announcement because SKUX had done a proof of concept. One of the things that I asked him was, you know, do these proof of concepts that, that end up going live, like, Getting the first one through the door, does that open up additional doorways? And I kind of see the the Visa SKUX announcement. And I go back and listen to those older interviews, and I'm like looking for key terms, and I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. And I'd actually say that they aren't proof of concepts. Yeah, they, yeah. They're actually uh, coming to market, so they're more pilots. Sure. They are early stage, but they're beyond proof of concept. They've proved that stuff out. One of the things that I like about Bobby is, even though we think about them as a promotions coupon kind of company, they aren't. They're a payments company. Oh, yeah. He's adamant about that. 100%. That they are a payment solution provider with Hedera at the base of their tech stack. A thousand percent. Well, Brandon, it's always a, a pleasure to have the opportunity to interview you. You can check out Brandon's podcast through the HBAR Foundation. He does fantastic weekly uh, recaps through his HBAR Bull account. And check out, uh, actually, real quick while we have a second, tell us where Twigital's at right now. What do you guys have coming on the sure. pipeline? Sure, so we already have a um, an application in iOS. We just launched a new version of that. So remember, initially we had to take pictures to create those 3D objects. Now you can actually just do a video and you can mint those directly into um, uh, NFTs on Hedera. So yeah, you can just go to the iOS store and you can pick it up and try it out. That's fantastic. Well, Brandon, it's been a pleasure as always and uh, we can't wait until next year. I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about. Sounds good, buddy.